Hi guys, Ryu here with another tool for Blender. Today I want to show you how you can improve HDRI lighting in your scene without adding any additional lights to your blend file. I have a simple scene here that is perfect for what I want to illustrate. And before actually I'm going to talk about this, let's jump to Photoshop real quick. I have two renders here that I've prepared, okay? The only thing I've added actually is just the color information. Now, this one is render 2 and this one is render 1. You can clearly see the difference, right, between the shadow information on the left hand side. So this one is much darker and this one is much brighter. Let's grab curves for a second. This graph in here is called histogram. It's commonly used in photography and we use it for um, exposing a picture or actually reading how the exposure of the of the image was captured so if it's overexposed underexposed etc but you can do the same thing in photoshop left hand side is blacks right hand side is whites now if i click on this handle and hover over my image you can see this like a dot on the line jumping up and down so if i go to a bright spot it's gonna go up and it's gonna go down in the darker areas if I jump to this image now, do the same thing, you can see that if I hover my mouse over these points, they're almost pure black. I mean, it's really close. So the top right corner, it's pure white or almost white in my case. And this one is black or almost black. Now, this is an unedited picture. If I started to add some sharpness, um, which is technically a contrast, and you know all contrast so increasing whites and uh, sort of boosting blacks i will simply blow this image out and i'm gonna have pure blacks and pure whites probably in this image now if you have pure whites in lights that's fine ish but if you have pure blacks in shadows or in other areas you have pure whites you will have no information in the image if you print it so if you would like to print your art or sell it as prints you really want to avoid pure blacks and pure whites. This render is much better as a base for editing than this one. To achieve this result, I use a trick that we use in photography called light bouncing. And I didn't change anything with my HDRI and I didn't use any additional lights. As you can see that the, the result is quite natural. It looks as if light was actually spilling all around this canister, right? So let's go to Blender and let's talk about it. Now that's the same image, it's in Eevee. Um, these renders are in cycles because of course cycles has a much better quality of shadows and light. Eevee is gonna be much easier to illustrate what I wanna show you because it's quicker in a viewport. So let's zoom in a little bit and you can see here I have a 16k HDRI. Now if I actually um, leave the camera view and I show you this image, the light is coming from over there. So it's sort of coming at a degree of let's say 45, 45 degree angle towards my, um, towards my uh, object. And this area here in the back is kind of, um, well, shielded or walled. Um, they have walls on the sides of the tree. So it's created a lot of shadows and sort of darkness right you can see this area is much brighter and this area is much darker in addition you have water which reflects uh, reflects light but it reflects light from this side from the right side but there is nothing to reflect light from this side which is causing these black shadows and then again um i have this sort of uh, a black background um behind my object which also blocks additional light because if i remove it you can see that things especially here look look at these shadows um, on this cone they will open up right so the trick i used it's it's extremely simple if i click this plane on you will see i added a plane on the left hand side now let me zoom into my image and let me show you what's the difference if I now 
um, increase my brightness of this color. Look at this side here on the top of the cylinder. If I turn it off and on, I hope it's pick, you know you can pick it up in YouTube. But the difference is massive if you actually render it in cycles. So I had it set to maybe this this amount of brightness, and I think it was actually tiny too bright but i wanted to make a point and you know um, show you how how different it looks with such a simple device so if i zoom to this object here now you can see how much difference it makes this whole area here is opening up with shadows right what's happening is that the light is coming to the plane and it bounces back to the object now the most important part in this whole operation is that you have this plane out of the camera frame. If it's gonna be in camera frame, you will have it in the render. As long as it's outside, it's fine. I'm using for this um, non-metallic surface, so sort of um, diffused surface, with very high roughness. Now, the reason for it is that, see, the light in here is what we call in photography a flat lighting, is, is an overcast. Not completely an overcast, but the light, the sun, is behind the clouds. So the sun is diffused, and that's a, sort of like a fuzzy, soft light. Which is why I wanted to imitate a similar kind of light going back into my object. This is also why my plane is quite grey, it's kind of like a dirty white, right? If I make it a bit more reflective, so add some specular uh, highlights or uh, dropped roughness, the reflection on this um, of the light on this object would be a bit more sparkly. So for instance, if you had much brighter image, like um, some sort of like a sunny HDRI, okay? Uh, let's grab uh, let's grab this one for instance okay right now you see the light is much more aggressive because it's a sunlight right where is my sun let's rotate it to roughly the same spot okay so somewhere over there right now if I go to my object and I switch off my plane you will see a massive difference in shadow because now the light is much more unforgiving, it's a very harsh light. So if I drop this plane back in, not this one, this one, you see the difference, right? I can manipulate with roughness. You, you might not pick it up in Eevee, but it's going to be visible in, in cycles. And the specular highlights of the surface, right? To actually add some, some more sparkliness to, to, this, to these reflections, especially if you have... Uh, this, this surface is quite matte and it's flat, there is no texture on it, it's just pure BSDF. But if I have some texture going on on it and will be, for example, some bumps and um, cavities, etc., right? The light will, will get picked up on it. So if you have a sparkly light, you have a kind of like a sparkling surface. So you could imitate another source of light by simply adding a plane to your scene. And that's it. So now if I wanted to post-process this image to something like this, you see that I added a lot of contrast. Well, not a lot, but I added some contrast. And this side just became darker. In addition, um, you have much more control over lighting in your scene. And you can, when you edit your render, you can actually um, operate with brights and bright and dark spots in your image to direct your attention to where you want it. So if I edit this image, it would not be as successful um, as this one. Thanks for watching guys, hope you liked the vid, drop us a like and subscribe if you did, and I'll talk to you in the next video.